the title. Today's video is going to be all about isopods. If you hear a lot of noise in the background, that is Kevin. He thinks he needs to come out of his enclosure right now, but he can't since I'm filming and the doors are open. But he constantly thinks he needs to come out. He's been out quite a bit already today, but he's never satisfied. So I'm sorry if you hear Kevin in the background. But today's video is about isopods, like I said. If you watched my bioactive haul, which you probably didn't, let's be honest, nobody watched it. In that haul, I did get my very first isopods ever. I got a culture of zebra isopods at a local pet shop, and I have set them up. They're actually in that blue bin behind me, or the clear bin with the blue lid, or blue handles. I don't know what I'm saying. It's been way too long since I filmed, but they are back there. I'm not gonna be showing you them today, but I really enjoyed having them, and I haven't set up the bioactive enclosure for my gargoyle gecko yet which is what they're originally for because I'm trying to get them to breed and grow my culture before I start putting any in the enclosure and since I've been having such a good time with them and I've really been interested in them lately it seems like a lot of people have been getting into isopods lately which is kind of like weird but also cool because they are pretty neat so far I decided to go ahead and get a couple more different types of isopods and today I'm going to be unboxing them and setting up their bins now I say I'm going to be unboxing them they are in this box right here but I have to be honest these actually came in and a few days ago I just haven't got around to filming no I haven't kept them in the box I just put them back in here for the video so I could do like a dramatic reenactment I don't know how dramatic it's gonna be but we're going to unbox these today and then I will show you their bins and how I'm setting them up this definitely isn't going to be a how you should set up isopods video because like I said I'm very new to them the zebra ones in the back are the only ones I have so far so I could definitely be making some mistakes in this video or have room for improvement I have done my research but since I'm new there's always more stuff I could learn so if you're watching this video and you see something that's not quite right please let me know down in the comments so I can look into it further and correct it but I have blabbed enough let's go ahead and open these up so I ordered my isopods online this time instead of getting them from a local store because they're not that easy to find around here and I wanted to get a couple different kinds I ordered these from Glassbox tropicals I'm not getting paid or anything from them that's just the site I found that I liked the best and they came in this little box shipping was really quick I think they shipped out like the next day after I ordered them and then it only took them a couple days to get here so shipping was really fast and then I know this angle isn't the best but it's what we're working with when it came in it did come in an insulated box and then other than the isopods I actually ordered these really gross little pods I know some people think they're cool other people think they're disgusting and are probably clicking off the video right now because they look really weird I'm kind of in the middle I think they are horrible looking but I'm also kind of intrigued I just thought they would be cool I thought the isopods might like to get in there so I ordered three of them one for the zebra isopods I already have and then one for each of the new ones I'm gonna be setting up today so I did order three of these they were pretty cheap so that's the first thing I got and then other than that I just got my two isopods so in here they came like this wrapped in paper and then there was more paper and a heat pack in the bottom of course the heat pack isn't warm now but if I wasn't doing a reenactment of this video and I was unboxing them live like I should have I would have said the heat pack was still warm because it was still very warm when I got them but in here is what we're here to see today. So I got two different types of isopods and here they are. So the first type of isopod I got are the powder orange. Both of these say they have 10 plus isopods in it. I believe when you order them, it says they put 10 to 12 adults in and then they're guaranteed to arrive with at least nine alive. So this one are the powder orange. I know these are pretty standard isopods. You see them a lot of places. So I got those. And then the other type I got are the Dalmatians. It also says there's 10 plus of these. I thought these were really cute. I know you shouldn't like judge an isopod on its cuteness because that's not what it's there for. But along with using these in bioactive enclosures, I plan on just keeping them kind of as pets. That's why I went ahead and got them some nice bin setups. So they are kind of pets. So I wanted them to be fun and cool to look out. So I have the powder orange and the Dalmatians. Okay, so now that you guys have seen the ice pods themselves, now it is time to go ahead and set up their enclosure. So these are the bins they're gonna be in. I have a bin for each different type. They're the same bin that I put my zebras in. These are, I believe, 12 quart bins that I got at Target. These are the airtight ones. So what I did for ventilation is I went ahead and drilled 16 holes on each end. And then just to make it a little bit more secure, I went ahead and hot glued some bio drain over the holes. That way the adults or anything can't get out. In my last bioactive haul when I bought that bio drain, I needed an 18 by 18 piece and I actually bought an 18 by 24 piece. So I did have a little bit of extra I was able to cut off. A lot of people use like screen or other fine mesh for this, but I didn't have any, so I thought this 
this bio drain will work. It's not the most beautiful thing, but it does allow for proper ventilation because you can get the airflow going through. So these are the bins we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna go ahead and set one to this side and I'm just going to go ahead and set up the first one. I'll probably only show you setting up one because I'm gonna set them up the exact same, but then I'll show both of the isopods going in. So the first thing we're gonna do is my main substrate. So for their main substrate, I'm actually going to be using the Millie Mix from Josh's Frogs. I picked this up at a local reptile expo. We have a vendor there that sells a lot of stuff from Josh's Frogs. I thought this would be a good choice of substrate because it is already enriched with some calcium and it does say on here it's for millipedes and isopods. So I thought this would be a good choice. So I'm gonna pour about half of this, I believe, into this bin. I'm not sure exactly how much we'll need, but I want about two or so inches of substrate in here. Steve thinks I'm opening something for him. I'm sure I'm going to make a mess. So it looks like there already is a little bit of like leaf litter and stuff mixed in also which is good because I am going to be adding more of that. Also, I just realized this angle is absolutely awful and you can't see anything I'm doing, um, but hopefully you can see some of it. I, I'm not a professional. 12 seconds later. I am a professional and I have two cameras, but I don't have two tripods, so I can't like set up a separate angle for you guys. But I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this in and try not to make too big of a mess because I really don't wanna sweep the entire pet room. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, we'll add a little bit more. That's probably about an inch or an inch and a half. So we'll add a little bit more of that. That should be good. Let's get dirt all over my spare bed. That will be good. So there is the main substrate. And then I'm going to also add quite a bit of leaf litter. And I'm going to mix this into the substrate. That way it decomposes and everything. This is some live oak leaf litter that I got once again from that same vendor at my local reptile expo. I think that's about half the bag, maybe a third of the bag. So I'm just going to mix this in and make a mess. I don't know if you can see like the dirt just flying up at me. I am a professional, do not worry. Okay, so I think that is good. There's quite a bit in there, but that's always a good thing. And then I'll replenish the leaf litter as needed. And then other than that, the main thing I'm going to use is I have this piece of cork bark. This is a pretty big piece. So I think I'm just gonna try to break it in half and use half in each one. I have broke a third of it off already and that is what is in my zebra isopod one. So let me see if, I'm sure I won't be able to break it in. Oh. Not in half, but it works. So we'll go ahead and put this on one end. This will just give them something to hide under and they can get in the crevices and do whatever isopods do. And then I'm gonna put one of these little seed pods in. We'll put this on the other side and just kind of bury it down in there a little bit in case they wanna get in there. And that is about it. Other than that, I just need to spray this down because they do need humidity. I'm only going to spray about a third of the enclosure because you want them to have like a moisture gradient instead of a temperature gradient because you don't want them too dry, but also you don't want them too wet. And if you spray down the whole enclosure and it's too wet for them, they don't have any choice but to deal with it. But if you only spray down about a third at a time, then they can pick and choose where they wanna be. So I'm gonna spray this down really quick and then we'll be back to put in our isopods. All right, so I went ahead and sprayed down about a third to a half. I probably sprayed a little bit more than I normally will just because it wasn't humid at all for now. So we're gonna go ahead and put the Dalmatians in here. I'll try to use my phone to get a separate angle. So I'm sorry if these shots look really bad. I'm trying, please forgive me. So in here, like I said, are the Dalmatians and then they are in a bunch of sphagnum moss already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the entire thing into the enclosure because that sphagnum moss is good. And if there's any babies in here, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally like toss them. So I just want to make sure I have everybody out of there. And then here are the isopods. I think most of them are on this little piece of egg crate. Here they are. I'm just going to go ahead and set them in here. And then it looks like they had a carrot to eat. I'm just going to spread some of this moss around and that is it. So here is our zebra isopod setup. I'm pretty sure I just said zebra isopods at least once, probably way more than that, but they are Dalmatian isopods. The zebras are back there. So now that we have the Dalmatian set up, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the enclosure for the powder orange. I'm gonna set it up the exact same way as this one. And then I will be back to show you guys when they're in their enclosure.
I've made a giant mess, but I did get the enclosure set up. So now I'm just going to grab my powder orange and my phone and hopefully get some close-up shots of these guys going in. So let's see if I am able to multitask or not without dropping anything. If I drop something, hopefully it's my phone and not the isopods. We're just going to put everything in just like we did with the Dalmatians. And it looks like most of them are also right here on the little piece of egg crate. So these are the powder orange. Um, but it looks like there are quite a few in here. So it looks like they did fare very well in shipping. Hopefully there are some babies started in here already too. I'm just gonna spread this moss around a little bit. And those are the powder orange. So my entire pet room is now a complete wreck, but both of my new isopods are set up. So I have the powder orange and the Dalmatians. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said at the beginning, this is in no way how you should set up your isopods because I'm still very new to them. So if you do have experience and if you see something that I could improve or I'm just doing completely wrong, please let me know because you can only do so much with research. Having some hands-on experience, you're always going to learn so much more. So I'm definitely going to be reading the comments down below to see what you guys think of these enclosures. If you want to see any updates on these, how they're breeding and how they're doing and everything, make sure you let me know down in the comments. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time.